Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you, and today I'm here to bring you a very fun interview, uh, and it is with Stu Marshall. Now, for those of you that may or may not know who Stu is, uh, he is in the band Death Dealer, which also includes former Manowar guitar player Ross the Boss. Uh, it's got Sean Peck from the Three Tremors and Cage singing, uh, as well as, you know, you also have Mike LaPond uh, as the new bass player in the band. Uh, you know, Mike, of course, you know, making his mark with Symphony X and his Silent Assassins uh, stuff as well. So uh, Stu is a really cool dude. I've known him for a very long time. Uh, we worked together, actually, and I sang on one of the Empires of Eden albums that he had put out. He had a series of records that had different singers doing their own thing, and he would write music for them. So the last one that they had actually put out, Architect of Hope, uh, I was singing on it, actually. I actually wrote a track on there with him. And, of course, Ralph Sheepers was on that album. You had just a lot of really great quality singers uh, on that record. Rick Alti, who sings The Master Plan, was on it. And uh, quite a few people, actually. So, uh, I, so I've known Stu for quite a while. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Really cool dude. Uh, fantastic guitar player. Uh, also played in the band Dungeon. And uh, just really... Uh, overall, just a really good musician. So uh, he, he's also in a band called Night Legion. Uh, and again, Stu's from Australia. So some of the projects he's involved with, you may not really know them that well over here in the States, for example, but a lot of really great stuff there. I'm going to put a lot of stuff in the show notes to where you can check out a lot of the music and stuff that he's been involved with. Anyhow, with that being said, this is myself in the interview with Stu Marshall of Death Dealer. Death Dealer, of course, sitting on an album they will be putting out at some point. And Stu, of course, has the next Night Legion album coming out. And that'll be coming out as well. So uh, here you go. This is myself and Stu Marshall of Death Dealer and Night Legion. Check it out. Hey, man, I have to say it's great to have you on the show, especially in its new format. And, um, you know, it's been a long time, dude, but you know, you're definitely one of my favorite people out there. So you got a lot going mm -hmm. on. So in a, you got night Legion, you got a lot of death dealer. You got a lot of cool stuff. You know, let's, let's talk about that. What do you have going on right now and what's coming out? And I know you've had some singer changes going on and, and go from there. Tony, always good to see you, mate. Um, you know, different countries, but, uh, blood brothers mate when when we're writing music together and stuff so it's been absolutely it's been a great ride to know you over the years and um yeah. very glad to be on your show so thanks for having me yeah. um yeah man uh i tend to always find myself with a, a full plate luckily um working with some incredible people um you know there's a lot of people out there that have no idea who i am um but you know i'm in a band called death dealer in, in america uh, even though I'm based in Sydney, and um, Death Dealer is a band that I formed with a guy called Sean Peck, uh, who is in a band also in the States called Cage, incredible vocalist. Um, and we've got Ross the Boss. Um, everybody knows who Ross the Boss is. And uh, the band started 10 years ago. We've released uh, three albums and an EP. We did some European touring. Things went really well pre-COVID. And uh, album four um is in the can mixed mastered ready to go and we've been holding off on releasing it until we had the right partnership with a good label yeah and that's what we're in the process of doing at the moment so i flicked you a, a secret super um uh, you know private version of one of the tracks for you to hear mm -hmm. and uh we just felt this album was like every band does you always feel your album special but I was saying to Sean, this album has to be released through a good label and this time, you know, we need to support it with some touring in the States and, and in Europe. So that's been the delay there. Um, but for people that haven't heard Death Dealer, it's, you know, fist in your face, high-paced heavy metal, um, which is what we're going for and it's what I love. I, I don't like the happy, singy sort of, um, I don't know, forest power metal. <laughs> like. I like high octane priest, um, old school stuff. So that's that's what sure. we're doing with that. So uh, very excited and working with Sean is always fantastic. And the band, you know, we've got Mike Lapon from Symphony X on bass, and it's uh, it's a weapon of a band. So we're just looking forward to, you know, now that COVID's done and 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 touring's back on to 
hit a plane, pack some bags and, and get overseas. Yeah, Mike, by the way, if you, there is an interview on my channel, he actually speaks very highly of you, just so you know. I, I, no, he's I, a sweetheart. Yeah, I, I posted a clip on it, actually. And it's interesting because, this. so just so everybody knows, the song you sent me and that I was able to actually check out, um, I have to, I'll tell people right now that I was blown away by it. In fact, I'd probably say it's one of the more powerful tracks you guys have put out. I mean, when you say high octane, you know, which the EP kind of went into that more <laughs> little faster, heavier direction. Uh, this yeah. song really picks up where that EP left off. I was actually, I really Ooh. dug the song. I actually dug it out again to, to check it out again because it had been a while, but um, I'm really mm. looking forward to the album. So if people liked the other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll definitely, you'll definitely really like this. In my opinion, um, it's, it's pretty awesome actually. Like even though I'm Australian, I, I'm, I'm a hardcore US power metal fan. So bands mm -hmm. like Vicious Rumors, forget about it. Like to me, you yeah. know, that's that's the benchmark, you know, that kind of, um, I always, you know, I love European stuff too, but I think American metal um, has definitely had a little bit more of a, a razor's edge to it. So yeah. um, that that's made sense and, and become real with Death Dealer as and certainly Manowar for Christ's sake, you know, like yeah. um, you know, I'm a massive Manowar fan. So working with Ross is a dream. And and you can hear that in the music, I think. But uh, yeah, so that's coming up, that's coming up uh next. We we're going to announce um a partnership with a label, I'd say, in the next four to five weeks. So that's okay. That's on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in other news, uh, you know, again, for your listeners that have no clue who I am, I, I'm in a band also called Night Legion. Um, that's our debut album. That came out on Massacre Records um, almost six years ago now. I cannot believe it. And um, Damn. it's an Australian-based band. I wanted to form a band. Again, um, you know, fist in the face power metal. Um, Sean got busy with Death Dealer. I had a year off. And so I wanted to go tour with some of my best mates. So um, Night Legion. Um, I'm announcing here, I guess, for the first time, we've just uh, secured uh, support with Udo Dirk Schneider when he comes to Australia on uh, April 6th. We're super pumped for that. Um, Night Legion has a new singer. We have a guy called um, Louis Gorgievsky who uh, sang on Empires of Eden um, that, that you know about, which we can talk about. Sure. He's um, incredible high uh, powerful voice, you know, um, sure. Dick, Dickinson-esque, very similar to Bruce in some ways. So, yeah, we're pumped for that. And our new album will be out on Ma uh, May 25 through Massacre. So um, we released a single in a couple of weeks and uh, we're super pumped to get that album out as well. So, yeah, it's it's um, been a busy time. Just, just so you are aware, anyone that listens to my radio show, they know who you are because you get <laughs> talked about. So let's put it that way. Let's, let's kind of set that record. Let's kind of change that a little bit because you are talk. You have been talked about quite a bit. So th at least I appreciate pe it. people that know me know who you are. So we'll just say that. that, but you know, it, it's funny. Louis a really cool dude. Um, I've gotten to know him through Facebook and he does actually check out the channel at times. And, you know, I've actually seen him comment. So really nice guy. And he actually is a phenomenal singer because I, mm because I never really had heard him sing until I heard some of the empires of Eden stuff that he had done because, you know, because I think it was on the album that I really hadn't heard you know, at the time. So, uh, but yeah, mm. phenomenal singer. I'm really looking forward to that uh, because uh, not only is he a really cool dude, but uh, I really want to see, I like the debut album that you put out. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, if uh, if anybody's interested, they go to our um, Facebook Night Legion page. And today, I just posted a, a, a video of Louis on his smartphone at home rehearsing for the gig, and his voice is just um, uh, a wonderful gift to behold. So I can't wait to. Um, I have shared a stage with him before, but I'm looking forward to bringing the yeah. full show out. And um, you know, we're talking to some promoters in the states, so hopefully, we can make something happen and come your way. Yeah, absolutely, dude. That would be that would be awesome, actually. And then, and then if you guys come out here, or if Death Dealer comes out here, then you know I'll get to watch Sean try to try to scam the comic book industry. <laughs> like, like, like when he like when he came here, he literally when I met him, and it was funny because you know I had actually never met him, 
in person. Mm-hmm. Then he came here. The guy, the dude literally had like three boxes of comic books. He like went down to some right before the three tremors show, he had gone to some comic book shop and he was literally wheeling and dealing them. And then he rolled up with Ripper at the the three tremors show that was here. And he's like, dude, look at all these comics I got. And I looked down, he's got like three boxes of them. So it was pretty, it was pretty funny. So you'll have to deal with that. You know, if you guys tour, you know, that's, what's going to happen. Sean's going to be raiding the local comic book. Uh, he's going to need his own, uh, his own tour bus for the books. Yeah, right. Exactly. Good on him. <laughs> uh, so, so that's pretty much how it went. It, it, you know, it's, it's great because, you know, a lot of these people, you know, one of the talents that you have that a lot of guys d- don't, or they've, you know, maybe never applied themselves to, to, you know, do something like this is that you have these, you have this ability to really adapt your songwriting to different people. You know, you spoke mm-hmm. of Udo, for example, you had a song that he sang on with the empires of Eden stuff and all of the singers mm-hmm. that you worked with there. But mm-hmm. even with like death dealer and, you know, you look, you talk about Louie. I mean, you have this ability to really be able to say, okay, I know what this guy's voice is capable of and mm-hmm. I can write a song that fits that. And I think that's something mm-hmm. that, you know, to me is a talent that not a lot of guys have, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, mate. There's, I guess there's two ways you could look at it. Um, because I don't sing, um, I've always said the singer is the person selling the story, right? I never tell a singer what to do unless they ask, right. For, right. For, 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 can you write me a melody? I, say, I never do that, ever. Mm-hmm. And um, But that's because I can't, I don't have the talent to sing. If I, if I could, like, you know, Ingve Malmsteen sings all his songs, you know, I, I couldn't do that stuff. So I guess that's the thing where I've had to adapt a different way to say, right, I'm going to write for Tony's voice. Let me hear what Tony's done. Yeah. Um, and what do I want to hear as a fan? What do I want to hear Tony sing? What do I want to hear Udo sing that maybe right. he hasn't really done before? You know, um, same thing with Ralph Sheepers. You know, I got I got Ralph mm-hmm. to sing on an album. He was gracious to do that. So, Rob, um, you know, um, Rob Rock sang on a song, Mike Vissera, you know, these great vocalists that I've always idolised what do I want to hear? And so I just put my efforts into trying to provide a a platform for them to do that instead of going, I have the whole picture worked out and here's exactly how I want it. And interestingly too, what I think made our um, partnership so much fun and Empires of Eden as a whole so much fun is all the singers did their own thing. So when you yeah. listen to the 10 songs, you're hearing different palettes, you're hearing different colours, you're not hearing my vision all the way through. And that's why I never called it Stu Marshall's solo album, um, mm-hmm. probably to the detriment of the marketing. You know, nobody really knew what Empires of Eden was. So um, when, you know, it, it was a bit confusing for some people. They're like, is this a band? What is it? And, and it just didn't feel right for me to say that. So, um, sure. but yeah, man, uh, I just, I dig writing and, and I've just written for Ross's new album, um, a couple of songs and, uh, there's folders full of riffs and, and songs. So anybody hits me up, I'm like, yeah, I, I got a catalog. I can, I can show you what I've got. So. Yeah, I had the pleasure of having to follow up Ralph Sheepers on that album because the song I did was literally like right after that. You know, it's a, it's a fact I brought up to him. You know, when I, when I brought him on my show, uh, it was a couple of years ago, like, like three years ago or something. He came on my show, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, I had to like follow up behind you. I'm like, I, you know, I was like, <laughs> and he's kind of laughed about it, laughed about it. But you know, it's interesting you brought that up because the song that he did on that album is one of the best things I think I've ever heard that guy sing. I mean, it's actually, it actually is one of the best mm. things I've ever heard him sing. And credit to Sean Peck, you know, Sean, Sean. So what happened? I approached Ralph. I approach a lot of singers to sing mm-hmm. on the Empires of Eden stuff in the past. And I'll go to 20 singers and I'll get five, you know, because yeah, yeah. Touring, touring schedules, uh, these guys cost a lot of money sometimes, you know. And um, But Ralph said, I can do it, but I don't have time to write. Right? Mm-hmm. He said, I'm too busy with touring. And so that's when I went to Sean. I said, you know, let's let's write this song for Ralph. And so we did. And um, Sean's version is incredible. Ralph's version is incredible. And, um, yeah, it was a great, great time. It's a wonderful thrill for me. It would be kind of cool. Well, you know, you've done versions of those songs on the Death Dealer albums. You should get Sean to do that that song, actually, at some point on one of the albums. I think it would be kind of – I've always asked him. I said, dude, I'm like, 
when are you going to put your version of that song in one of the albums? He kind of dances around the question a little mm. bit. The reason being, is, uh, honestly, Sean and I write so much material that yeah. we'll look at an album and go, right, so we got 16 songs for a 12-track album. And we'll go, and uh, do you want to, like, I think we put Total Devastation on an album, which is an old yes. Empire's Beaten track for, for yes. people that don't know. Um, Hammer, we, Hammer we Down. Did that. Yeah, and ha well, Hammer yep. Down certainly was a live favourite too when we went out yep. live. People love that song. Um, but we have so much uh, new material that we're excited about that we just, okay, well, let's leave that on the back burner and let's put out all this new stuff. You know, we've always got bonus tracks for Japan and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, look, time time might reveal. That's cool, man. So, so talk about, you know, obviously COVID was a lot different for a lot of people depending on the country. And obviously you're touring. And I just had this big panel discussion about how much more difficult touring is because of the cost of everything. But, you know, I don't know what it's like over where you're at, you know, for you to do a tour there, because in the States, I can tell you that the cost of everything has gone up exponentially. Like it's like insane, you know, the amount of money people are paying for everything from vans to buses. So down, down in Australia, what's it like? I mean, has the touring cost gone way up or is it, you know, pretty much still pretty easy to go out and pretty cost effective for you guys to go out and tour? Yeah, it's definitely cost effective to tour here. The problem with Australia is our population. We're a small country, mm -hmm. um, you know, 32 million odd people compared to 300 odd million in America. So, yeah. um, you know, you can play the major cities and then you're kind of done. You know, you do. You, so you've got to pick your shows well. That's why we try and do international supports if we can. You know, we play with Udo, yeah. and, and it, um, in the past, you know, we've we've done we've done shows with Halloween and, and bands like that. So, but yeah. to answer your question, it's not too bad out here. Um, there's not a lot of bus touring in Australia because people fly. It's uh, major okay. city, major city, to major city. Unlike the states, you know, you'd get in a bus and go and do you know, 25 shows in 30 days. So, um, yeah, 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 definitely it, doable. Definitely doable. Yeah. And the thing about the States too, is that it's so big, you know, I think to actually hit the major areas, just the major, you know, like East coast, West coast. I mean, it's a minimum, I think of 20 days, you know, just to make it through the entire country, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like when tour buses go up, like, you know, they're, they go up to $2,500 a day and then they charge you $8 a mile, you know? So, you know, what happened, what happens is the, the cost, when those things cost half that much, not even, you know, before pandemic wise, but all these buses, they, they sat, you know, forever, people weren't driving them. And then of course you have maintenance issues. The buses break down, you know, these companies were paying these mortgages on these million dollar buses. And now they're trying to make that up, you know? So it's, it's been kind of crazy, you know? Musicians seem to have gotten like the shaft when it comes to this, you know, as we say. Yeah, it's a conversation I think a lot of people may not want to hear. You know, fans may not want to hear, you know, the mm -hmm. expenses of things and, and he, you know, listening to the bands, we always sound like we're crying, you know, and we're, we're saying, you know, um, you know, all these expenses, but the reality is there. Um, mm -hmm. And nobody wants to lose money. You know, I know, I know bands that are, big bands that are breaking even at the moment just to get the crest of the wave to try and make a living. I'm um, very fortunate that I, I work a day job. So um, yeah. I don't have, I don't have any of those pressures or stresses, you know, it's just about getting out and having fun and coming to see friends. So, but yeah, it's, yeah, I, th I think it will get better. It just takes a bit of time. Yeah. So, so when's this night Legion album coming out? When do you plan? Yes, on Night Legion. Uh, Night Legion. The the album's called Fight or Fall. Okay. I don't even think we we haven't told anybody this yet. <laughs> um, we've had incredible album artwork by a guy called Dusan Markovic. I don't know if you can see this, um, but yeah. Dusan did a really great cover for us on the on the debut, and um, he he's come back to do the second cover, which was so cool. Uh, May twenty five, Massacre Records. There'll be two singles released before. Um, we've we've gone some really diverse titles. The the first singles um, about the I love Hammer Horror films, right? Yeah. So, um, Hound of the Baskervilles is one of my favorite old school 
stories and and so we've written a song about that which is kind of cool um bit of king diamond vibe in there of course you, you've got to eject that um and yeah that's that's coming out and we're, we're super pumped it's a global release and uh, massacre have been a fantastic label did a really good job for us on the first one so thomas and and the staff there are, are pumped for this and um couldn't be couldn't be happier. You know, we we had a, a singer on the first album, um, um, Bo Simpson, uh, very talented guy, and, and he is still talented, of course. He's in his band Darker Half, uh, which has always been a priority for Bo. Um, uh, he he did a great job for us, but you know, if if anything happened with Darker Half, it would come first, which I respect. And and things took off for Darker Half, and we we had to move on to somebody that was really going to uh, be committing to deadlines and 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 the album and things like that so mm -hmm. um you know no bad blood uh, kind of boring but um all good awesome well you know when that album comes out or you, you know when it actually does come out you know i got to get you and louie on here i think that would be you know at the same time that would be a lot of fun i had my first interview i interviewed an entire band and it was actually i was wondering how <laughs> this was going to go it actually yeah. went really well so it'd be cool to have him on and, and talk about the record because you know I, I've always liked the stuff that you've done, uh, you know, with, and a lot of these bands are different, you know, a lot of all, everything. I mean, you've like blasted the static, you know, and all this other stuff yeah. that you've done. I know it seems like a long time ago since that came out, but that, you know, a lot of the, those projects and stuff that you've participated in, I thought were, were pretty cool and definitely some good stuff uh, yeah, going on. Thank you, man. Yeah. Louis is a really fascinating guy to talk to. Great lyricist, very intelligent guy, very mm -hmm. cerebral, um, perfectionist. And, uh, you know, we, um, we're different people, but work really well together. So I'm very lucky to, to um, be working with him. Actually, if I look a little bit tired, it's because I was at Striper last night in Sydney. I saw the photos. Yeah, I saw that. that. Yeah. yeah. Striper. My God. Yeah. Like so heavy, you know, I, I am, um, there's, you, you, have you heard of a guy, uh, on YouTube called Razor Fist? <laughs> yes, I know. Him. I've heard of him. Definitely. Yes. I love his, his metal anthology videos. He puts yeah. so much effort into these and, and he did a whole thing on Striper. And I think for the first five to 10 minutes, he's just yelling at the camera about how Striper are real heavy metal and that everyone thought that they were a pack of poses should, you know, burn and die. Yeah. And I've always loved Striper. You know, I always thought they were heavy and I agree with him, but dude, last night they just, I think I've got the, I met up with the guys as well. They're really cool. cool That's dudes. awesome. It's, um, it was a stunning show. So, um, you know, if, if anyone out there is even think second guessing whether they go see that band, do not. They were on fire. They, they, Striper was a band that I went and I saw them before I ever heard their music. So in other words, I got the I got ticket to some of one of their shows and I went and watched them play and I never heard anything by them. This is a long time ago. And I'm like, right. these guys, same thing with Saxon. I had never really knew much about Saxon. And I saw him live and, I'm, and that's when I immediately had to go out and be, and be like, you know what? I got to get some, I got to get some albums by this band. And yeah, they're definitely like a lot of people always like, oh my God, they're, they're like this Christian band and blah, 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 blah. But when you listen to them, Though even now, I think they're actually the music they put out now is a lot better than, in my opinion, than what they were doing, say, like in the 80s. I mean, they really, I mean, from the live perspective, it's 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 insane how good those guys are. And yeah, I, I yeah. always always felt again from the American power metal side, I always thought they were power metal. Like when you mm -hmm. listen to Soldiers on the Command, yeah, a song called The Way. Um, you know, th there's some savagely heavy stuff in that old stuff. And and again, while we're talking about them, their later albums, like their most recent albums, are just mm -hmm. absolutely killer. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a it was a good time. Pretty pretty cool stuff, man. You know, it it's uh, yeah. One of the and I got things to meet Oz Fox as well. Like I, I um, paid for the meet and greet and went and met Oz. And Oz Fox has been a massive influence, like from 1985 for me. So, sure. you know, to meet to meet that guy was crazy, and um, you're very talented. Uh, of and I also never knew Michael Sweet played guitar as well as he did either. So, yeah, um, you know, I guess, um, America, you guys get uh, so many bands coming through, Striper playing, you know, quite a bit. Whereas for us, we get them, you know, every four or five years. So, yeah, 
Yeah, the, you know, the when I saw them, I was literally at the front of the stage and I actually was watching. He was like Michael Sweet was literally like right in front of me. And, you know, again, at the time, I knew nothing about the band except that they existed. And I was blown away by them, to be honest with you. I mean, they played a pretty small club. I can't remember how long ago it was. It was a long time ago, but amazing band, honestly. And I, I envy the fact you got to meet them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, good times. But uh, yeah, mate, this this year is, I guess, the lift off from COVID. You know, it's affected everybody. Anyone watching yeah. this has their own story. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and um, I'm really feeling, you know, late 22, 23 now. You know, the dust has settled. We're we're getting back out. Spirits are high. People want to go and see metal again. And um, you know, it's an interesting time too. There's, there's quite a few bands hanging it up. You know the classic bands you know moving away from from touring and things like that so right um super keen to see what the next step is i think there's a lot of great bands out there and um in some ways it's made it more challenging as a writer because it's upping the game you know with with everybody thinking about what the next moves might be yeah you know it's interesting we had a i had a discussion i always have these like discussion panel things with people and we were talking about that same subject like you know ozzy finally retired you know because of his yeah. back and stuff but you figure black sabbath you know how long does iron maiden have left you know i mean how long is deep purple going to tour for how long is you know how long's metallica and some of the bands that came just after that era how long are they going to be around you know so to me i actually did a i actually did a show of of why it's so hard to find a lot of these newer bands you know and a lot of it's yeah. just saturation i mean i, I was telling sean actually i said you know, I, I get, I, I, like, I, I looked at how many emails I had like 20 years ago when I started, you know, 25 years ago when I started my show, I'd probably get a couple mm -hmm. thousand mm -hmm. a day, a, a year. Last year, I had 47,000 emails from publicists. Mm -hmm. So now you have to work harder to find the really good bands these days. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's interesting to see what happens yeah. down the road. I think the answer, I don't know if this came up on your show, I think the answer to me is quite simple. Um, you know, if any of your listeners find the world's best band, they're going to need somebody that has um, 500000 to a million dollars in raw capital to invest into that band to break yeah. them, to break, to break them nationally. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that end of story it's about dollars and and that's why these legacy bands are still going because they made their money uh and made their fame at, um completely reasonably because they're brilliant but they made their fame off the back of you know 20 30 million dollar budgets in the states excuse me in the 80s when they yeah. were touring the states and touring europe whereas now um you know, let's say Night Legion's the next thing, right? That's the next big thing. It's going to take, you know, Priest and blah, blah. Well, it's going to be a half a million dollar concept to even break, you know, globally the band to start generating income. So mm -hmm. I think we're in a different world. I think um, uh, it's very hard for bands that have this um, fame mindset. I couldn't care less about fame, right? I no. couldn't care less about that i just wanted my music heard i couldn't but if, if there are bands out there that oh, i want to be the next metallica it's it's great to have that aspiration <laughs> um you know bions did you guys talk about the bion situation oh yeah yeah you, that's that's been brought you, and, up and you, your listeners understand you know bands have to pay to play yeah um even before a flight even before a you know accommodation so um but that's the world. That's that's how it works. So I, I just don't think there's back financial backers out there anymore that are going to support pushing big acts. I just I think those days are done. Yeah. So one of the things that we had talked about was a band that I, I will. I, I believe the 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 guy that I had. I was one of the guys I had on the show. Is his name's Justin. Um, he plays in a really cool band that. Um, is putting out an album on Metal Blade, which th the album is phenomenal, you know, that they're going to be putting out. But he brought it up. Like, there are some of these bands, for example, there were, there was one band where just to be the opener, this doesn't count. This isn't even counting transportation, any kind of food, <laughs> anything. It was 22 grand just to buy onto the tour, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's a very, that's a very common thing because, you know, you look, how does this band get this tour? Well, they're buying on the stuff and Sean, even Sean came on there and we, we talked about that. You know, we talked about the difficulties in making merchandise and, 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 and mm-hmm. vinyl and everything else. So, um, but it Tony, was I'll, t- I'll tell you, I'll tell you yeah. a story. I, I, I was, yeah. I was walking, yeah. walking, um, uh, around a famous landmark, uh, Bondo beach. This is probably about six or seven years ago and the phone rings and I won't mention the guy's name. And he said, look, man, I, I really want to know if you're available to join the band. And they were a pretty prominent band in Australia and did a lot of touring. And mm-hmm. I said, mate, very flattered. Thank you for considering me and, and certainly interested. Um, you know, my availability is open and, and um, you know, I can give you a professional uh, participation, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, um, the only thing I'm going to need from you is to go and get a $20,000 loan. <laughs> and I'm like, what for? And he said, well, we've got a European tour with Slayer and everyone's throwing in 20 grand. <laughs> and at the time, I'm like, look, with deepest of respect, I'm just, I'm just not that guy. You know, I, I, <laughs> if, if anything, you know, um, I probably need to get paid. I don't know. But it's just one of those things, arrogantly, as I say that, um, I, I just won't do that. Funnily enough, a friend of mine was the second phone call and okay. um, took it and did it and and got the loan and, and went in and did the, did the tour and he said it was the greatest time of his life. So, mate, make no mistake, um, there's money to be made in uh, people wanting to buy on and, and that but that's the model and there's no point in raging against it. Sure. Um, you just have to work with it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at the... I'm looking at you behind you. How many guitars are you up to now? It's, it's insane. There's uh, it's a bit of a mess here. There's a whole wall over there as well. We, we're up to 80 now. I was going to ask. I don't remember what the number was last time, but I know it was, I, I know yeah. it wasn't quite 80. So I saw you have some of your old ESPs and stuff back. I saw you were posting those like, yeah, on this Facebook is, and everything. It's funny. Like I've got um, 80 guitars, but this is the one. This is kind of the one of one that ESP made for me. Um, I, I I don't know if I told you the story, but um, I was in Japan and I went to, I was with ESP. I was endorsing ESP and I had a great long relationship with them and mm-hmm. um, so long that I knew uh, a gentleman, I know a gentleman there called Makoto Suzuki, who when I first met him, um, was, uh, look, he wasn't senior, let me put it that way. He was just working at the company. And we became f- firm friends from when I was touring Japan. Anyway, cut forward many, many years, and he's one of the, the senior executives at ESP. He's a big hitter. And um, I met up with him for a coffee uh, in Tokyo, and I'm like, how are you? And he goes, listen, let's go and build you a, a guitar. And so he literally takes me from this coffee shop straight to the custom shop. He's like, right, what do you want? And I had no idea. You know, like I, I had an idea, but I, I didn't really formulate this is what we were going to be doing. So yeah. this was designed um, in about 10 minutes <laughs> with every dream spec I could think of. And um, it's basically crossing for guitar players that understand it's crossing a Gibson Les Paul, which is pretty much the neck with, you know, yeah the most metal of shapes. So um, this is the one that gets played um, 90% of the time. The rest are just fun, fun machines. I gotcha. So what, so what, so what do you got back there? Any, you know, cause there's a lot of different stuff going on back. Yeah. There, man. Yeah. Yeah. Let me have a look. I got, got a couple of gems. I got, got a couple of nice floral gems. Okay. Um, so I've been on an Ibanez, craze the last 12 months so um my very first real guitar was an ibanez rg which i've got back there um but yeah i'm lucky enough to get i got a couple of florals um, yeah these um these have shot up to stupid money um and then i got a, a white gem i got two white gems um so yeah a lot of fun machines and then the more classic stuff back here is like like a 72 72 let's pull custom nice you know so um 
yeah, a lot of variety in the, in the in the weaponry at the moment. And then the George Lynch stuff, you know, I'm a, a massive Lynch fan. This is kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's called an An Chang Star. Um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> there's no shortage, no shortage of string changing required. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's some cool stuff, man. So eighty. 80 guitars have you now now let me ask you this do you ever part ways with any of them do you ever sell them do you ever oh like, yeah 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 it's a revolving door dude it's it's totally a revolving door um yeah you know i've, I've always got five or six up for sale or trade mm -hmm. and um you know i'm starting to look at usa jackson's now so i want to get more jackson so i'll put a couple of of um les paul's up and you know but it's a it's a it's just a hobby dude it's a fun hobby you know <laughs> and um the stable now is pretty good like I've, I've had large numbers of guitars in the past but half of them have been a bit cheapy and a bit crappy and now it's all sort of premium premium stuff yeah so sean's got sean has comic books you have guitars yeah yeah i think sean's probably more successful with the comic book stuff he's got I think he's, you know, sitting on a couple of small fortune items, you know. So, uh, but um, yeah, dude, you know, <laughs> boys and their toys doesn't, you know, you're into cars, right? I am. Um, you know, I, I'm actually, believe it or not, um, I am into cars, but I, I'm more into cameras. So, okay. I, I, I have like, if if I go behind the backdrop here, there's an insane amount of different vintage cameras. <laughs> It's kind of, it's basically, it's basically what you have in guitars behind you, but it's cameras. Like, old I can't work it out though with blokes, like all of us, like we, we just love collecting yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I, I, I keep telling my wife, it's a cheap hobby, you know, it's not like boats, <laughs> speed boats or something. So, but, it's, um, it's, it's cheaper than cars. I can tell you that. Yeah. And hands down much cheaper sean's hobby much cheaper than vehicles i can tell you that <laughs> vehicles are like a step like boats are probably the worst right yeah. like like boats are just money pits cars are kind of just below that they're really not they're not as bad right a mate of mine had a really nice boat and he, he said yeah. do you know what boat you know what boat stands for what's that better organize another thousand <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's not that's definitely that definitely applies i mean being where i'm at because i'm by lake Erie and, and stuff i know a lot of people that have boats that go on the lake and i mean they tell me all sorts of horror stories about how much money they're sinking into them and mm. i'm like really you know they'll go out fishing and and all that stuff out and they'll tell me like they got to fix something. And then once one thing breaks, 20 other things break. And then before you know it, you've just sunk, you just almost bought a new boat basically. And that's, mm. that's essentially what happened. So that's cool, man. Yeah. It's, it's mm. always interesting. You know, one of the things I've always thought was fascinating, especially some of the newer stuff that uh, the newer stuff that you have uh, been recording. You know, we talked briefly before the interview about this, but you know, the guitar sound and the production and everything, and a lot of the stuff you've been doing, this sounds a lot better. The guitar sound, especially, um, I think yeah. sounds sounds amazing. I mean, you sent me a, a revised, a remix version, for example, of the Empires of Eden song I sang, and just the guitars just punched through a lot, a lot nicer. Uh, mm. And then even yeah, the last look, Death Dealer. My, you know? my admission is, I'm I, I I'm a musician. I'm not an engineer or a mixing engineer and I had to do it out of necessity. Like 12 yeah. years ago when I started doing this, it's 20 grand to get a, a production together. And so I had to learn how to do it. And the first few productions I put together sounded very ordinary, if not terrible. And um, it's still not where I want it to be. And in fact, um, the new Night Legion album and the new Death Dealer album have been mixed by someone completely different to me. So okay. that's that's why it's going to sound great. You know, if, you know, my dream is to have like a Jacob Hansen mix the album or, <clears throat> um, an, you know, um, Andy Sneap mix the album. That's what I want to hear. And so it's been a progressive journey of frustration for me over the years. You know, the Empires of Eden albums I did myself first couple of death dealer albums i did and every time you put out the album you're kind of wincing a bit to go man like, 
is someone going to say this sounds terrible? Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't like that. I just want to write, play guitar. So I ended up just going, you know what, let's get professionals to do what the professionals do. And we were lucky to get a guy called Chris Thamelko. He's a, an Australian producer on the rise, man. This guy is going to be one of the big names, mixes a whole bunch of albums, and um, he's just – yeah, when you say the production's improved, it, it, you know, a lot of the time it's because of guys like that that I'm working with that do all that sure. stuff. Yeah, I definitely, and, and you know, as far as the Empires of Eden stuff, I don't, I don't think the production was terrible by by any means. I mean, my my test for it is always listen to it my work vehicle because I don't have a great sound system in it, and if it sounds pretty good there, then we're good, you know, because it's going to sound great. Yeah. In- in a giant stereo, but I thought those albums sounded pretty good. The last couple Death Dealer albums, I really liked the sound on them. So mm-hmm. uh, the e- the EP especially, um, the EP yeah. and the and the third album um, are sound pretty awesome. But you know, even when I listen to the first couple records, I mean, I have the second album, for example. I'll, you know, I got it on vinyl, for example, and it sounds. I mean, it sounds amazing, actually. So um, thanks, mate. Yeah. I think you're, Look, uh, production is a is a is a vehicle to deliver the song right that's yeah. it yeah and let's all face it a thousand metal heads are in a club you know there's two people going oh the snare could use a little bit of you know 5k you know yeah as long as the songs are there and the performance is there you know thank thank god i work with great singers you know thank you like yourself you know you, you put on a song it's like well listen to this guy's voice do you know what i mean like mm-hmm. yeah what do you want? You know, half half the half of my gripe with bands that I don't like are because the guys can't do it live and and can't sing and can't play. And um, I'm lucky to be surrounded by some incredible yeah. talent. Yeah, I could tell you when I saw. So to be to to basically touch on what you just said, when I saw the Three Tremors play live, right. And I had never seen I, I had never seen Sean play before, right? I am not kidding you. And I, on stage, all three of the guys, actually, Harry and then obviously Ripper, all three of those guys, it sounded like the album. And I went and I took some video on my phone, you know, because sometimes your ears can't hear that. And I'm like, damn, dude, these guys, like Sean didn't miss a note. Like he wasn't off pitch. Same with Ripper and Harry Conklin. I mean, it was, I mean, when you talk about, you know, when you hear that on the record, just so people know, they, those, you know, Sean can sing that, you know, live, like, yeah. like it's nothing, you know, I mean, it's pretty much how it, how it is. It's a good feeling, you know, to my left to watch Sean perform, you know, when I'm on stage, mm-hmm. you know, you're doing your thing, but when you've got a guy that can do that, when, you, you know, when, when you've got singers of that level of Sean and, and Louie yeah. um, live, just wiping the floor with you know everybody <laughs> it's that's yeah. what you want and and that's a great feeling um you know many years ago i went out with a very confident singer we're not going to say the name of the band um or him um but went out with a very confident singer and then he just couldn't handle it live yeah and that's a horrible feeling you know so um yeah, yeah sean's the real deal and and you know i know ripper has a high profile he's clearly um you know ex-priest and what a lovely guy and an incredible singer and harry with jack panzer but you yeah. know sean can sean could step up with maiden tomorrow and kill it you know what i mean like he's world yeah. class 24 7 um ready to go you know and I've, I've been waiting for years for sean to tell me you know what so-and-so bands pick me up and i can't do death dealer anymore because <laughs> i'm touring nine months of the year it wouldn't surprise me um you know he's he's that good. Yeah, I think he's pretty kind of pretty happy where he's at though. You know, it, it's interesting. I remember when Three Tremors. You know, one of my favorite singers growing up, and and obviously someone you were friends with was Steve Grimmett. And then watching him do play with the Three Tremors because Harry couldn't do those first shows what was yeah. absolutely phenomenal. But the one thing I could tell you, you know, sadly he passed away, but. What was amazing is is him losing his leg and then going on stage and just belting out notes like it was like it didn't even face him and and I you know I had so much more respect than I already did have for him watching him do that I mean it was amazing and mm. you know you worked mm. with him you played some mm. shows with him and and mm. uh, he's definitely 
I bring that up because the guy would hit every note like it was second nature, you know? Yeah, mate, Steve Grimmett, uh, we miss him terribly. Um, me and my wife were very good friends with with him and his wife and family. Over in, we, yeah. we stayed with him over in the UK and we, we toured him out here and we became very close and wrote some music together for Empires and uh, yeah. just became good buddies. And over the years, watching him grow, Grim Reaper again, you know, he put a lot of effort into those albums. Um, if anyone hasn't heard the Onslaught album called In Search of Sanity, you must yep. find that immediately. If you haven't heard it and you like power metal, um, it is a crushingly good album. And I think some some of Steve's finest vocals um, and, and, and the band he was in, Lion's Heart, was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Man, you look at rocked all of us. Him not, you know, him passing, and um, but what a great talent and what a great voice and live. You know, the guy had a cast iron voice and, and was just, um, you know, an English sweetheart. Yeah. One of the other things I've always liked to playing with Ross the Boss, which you know, a big man and more fan. So, for yeah. you, how how did that whole relationship <laughs> start start with him? <laughs> And you oh guys, you guys have a really good musical chemistry together. I mean, when I listen to some yeah. like Death Dealer albums, Look, the it start sounds of Ross, good. Yeah, the start of Ross is what dreams are made of. You know, I was sitting at Sean's house when we were we were forming Death Dealer, and we we right. we done Empires of Eden together, and and I think actually you were the catalyst that said to Sean, you know, you and Stu should do a band. Since, I remember you know, that, 10, yeah, eleven years ago or something, and. I was in San Diego with Sean's and and we were talking about this band. And he was like, if you could dream of anybody to play in the band on guitar, who would it be? And you know, we had a few drinks and I'm like, come on, it's that you know, that the dream. He goes, Yeah, the dream. I said, Well, it's either KK Downing or yeah. Ross the Boss. And uh, Sean looked quite serious at me. He goes, I know Ross. And I'm like, come on, you know. Don't bullshit me, you know. And um, he's like, nah. And he, he picked up a phone and he rang Ross and he said to Ross, he said, look, you know, I got this thing happening with this guy from Australia. We got some songs. We've, you know, are you interested? And you could, you know, Ross is like, sure, no problem, you know, like he's, he's like, send me the tracks. And um, that's kind of where it all started. And yeah, I went back to Australia, and, and a few months later, I came back to America, and Ross came to San Diego, and we hung out, and uh, we just hit it off. I've been listening to Ross since I was ten years old, so yeah, um, I know Ross as a player. Ross as a player is in my playing, so it made the synergy so cool that I respect everything he does. Uh, he, he's you know said some nice things my way and and when we get together it's this real simpatico guitar thing because ross doesn't play with other guitar players you know ross has always been on his own so i respected that and came in with a, a you know let's do the kk tipton thing let's you know do yeah. the, the lizzie thing and just really feed off each other so cool thing with ross when he solos you know it's ross right correct correct when, when i play you can tell it's not ross you can tell it's me so we've got really contrasting vibes but i think they blend i hope they blend we, we're we're hoping artistically they blend and um you know i love the guy he's he's, he's one of my best friends and we become good buddies now uh, we got past all the 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 fanboy stuff pretty early and and now we're just mates and you know we love hanging out and jamming and writing songs and and ross has asked me to write some songs for his new album which is really cool so um yeah. i wrote a song for his last album called maiden of shadows that that turned out real good and um so yeah it's good it's you know i'm very fortunate by the way when i i, I remember when i made that suggestion about you and sean doing a band you were just like you kind of kind of laughed and you're like watch this space that's what you said to me i, I remember the interview <laughs> and, and you know just, just so you know how long ago that was that was like i think i've known you like 13 years now something along wow. maybe maybe longer than that because i first met sean i think in like 2009 and then i right. became aware of you like the next year because he was like dude you got to check this guy out steer marshall 
And I was doing my show at the time. I messaged you, I friended you on Facebook, and I'm like, dude, you got to come on my show. I heard, I only heard like two tracks off of that album. Sean sent them to me, and I'm like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get this guy on the show. And that's kind of how it all kind of transpired since then, you know. So, but yeah, you know, the thing about Ross is. On that debut album, the first Death Dealer album, I remember that specifically. There were there were solos, and I'm like, dude, this has definitely got to be Ross playing this. This isn't Stu because he has a specific yeah. the way he plays the guitar solos, especially when you start listening to stuff like, especially when you listen to the Kings of Metal album, you know, by Manowar, for example, um, and even like the 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 first album, the first Manowar album, I absolutely love. But when you listen to like his solos, I could tell on the album it, what was him and what wasn't. You know, and yeah, was, Ross has a Ross yeah. is unique. I, I've had the distinct pleasure of watching Ross night after night after night, even on his own Ross the Boss tours, which, which I've been along for just to hang out on. Um, his attack, he has an attack, a, a, a visceral attack on the guitar that only he has, right. and he does stuff with notes that only he does it's it's truly in the hands and and his heart and soul so um very hard to replicate um very much rooted in old bb king sort of stuff but sure man when he gets when he shreds forget about it like it's it's a fiery blaze and um articulate and and intense and angry and um People need to listen a little bit more to Ross's nuances because I've bore witness many, many times to um, the lesson. You know, for me, it's it's like a clinic, you know, and and it lifts my game too. Like right. with Ross, so I, you know, I can't go up and not that I half ass anything, but I have to I have to up up the game, and he loves that too because he says that pushes him, <laughs> him to move as well. So it's good. It's good. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, you know what? Um, one last question for you before we I sure. hit stop on a record and we end the interview. But I, I have to say, you know, your last, you got this stuff coming out and, you know, any last words for mm. any fans of yours? Because people yeah. on my radio show, I've talked, I play the music, you know, I've talked about you quite a bit. So, um, you know, people on my show at least know who you are, but you know, any last words for any people that are going to check uh, this interview out? Yeah, well, look, mate, uh, look, whoever stuck with us, uh, you know, uh, 50 plus minutes into an interview, thank you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, look, my guitar playing on these next two albums, I firmly believe is some of the best playing I've ever done. I really pushed myself through the COVID phase to mm -hmm. not repeat what I've done in the past. I'm super, super proud of it. A lot of time and effort went into it. Um, you know, please drop by socials. You know, everybody knows how to find us. Um, the music's on the streaming services for Night Legion. Please check that out. And, uh, you know, support your local metalhead. You know, if, if you see a local band playing, go and check them out, buy a T-shirt. You know, all we are is traveling T-shirt salesmen, right? So um, if you want some merch, you know, drop by, pick some up and, uh, you know, keep supporting Tony's show. It's a great show and, and thanks for having me on. Awesome. Well, there will be links to some of that stuff in the show notes on YouTube. So I'll definitely throw those in there so we don't have to give those out, but you know, different websites, you know, where they can check your stuff out and, you know, I'll have all that in there when I post the interview. So um, that way people can go down to the show notes and the links and uh, that way they can check everything out. If you like it heavy and shreddy, that's how we make it. 